but let's review the wreck right now, okay? okay. I'm sure What's up, right. YouTube? In this video, we're being coached by Daniel, the number one American player in Age of Empires 2. Hope you learned something. Enjoy. <laughs> Which is where I think progressions gets, uh, like, I, I'm not sure. I think this is a mid-elo common mistake on the progression of the games. But we'll we'll check it out, okay? What's Just up, right now on how, what I think the game, how I thought the game should have progressed. And yet, why the game progressed that way. So, right now, your early, your early Dark Age was really, really good. Honestly, I think it was good. Until that bore losing Ville. Yeah. Like, I don't think that was, I don't think, I, I really truly think that your Dark Age is pretty solid. And losing that Boreville was... I don't think it was a big. I I th obviously it's a really big. It deal, was a but I don't think that you do that. I don't think that you do that every game, right? So I'm not gonna talk about no, no. that much. Like obviously you don't do that every game, and it's just a mistake that you know it happens to everyone. But I'm gonna look at what I think was the mistake in Dark Age. I'm not gonna talk about the board at all. That board doesn't it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But the actual mistake was when the game, like where I think the game really really failed, was where those matter. Okay, right here. <laughs> this doesn't yeah. matter too much. But here is where I think I would want you to start noticing more. Okay. Number one, as soon as you see this, so I don't know where your vision was, uh -huh. but your TC, there's not much, there's really not much to look at right now. Okay. I personally put the sheep over here, uh -huh. shift click these villagers shifted. and then shift click that. And then these next villagers shift click that or something like that. And that's uh -huh. it. There's nothing to look at your TC, your mill, your bears. I mean, Everything's your fine. there's literally nothing to look at. So right now, the most important thing for me would always be looking for scouting information. So right yeah. now, number one, I see that he's pushing in the deer. That's fine. I personally would never, ever attack a scout. Like a scout, mm -hmm. for a scout, trading HP is only good if you know that you're behind in fuel. Okay. If that makes sense. And because of the fact that he is going to get fuel H first, and if a scout is like, let's say 25 HP, like from just the encounter, he can't really snipe your villager anymore. And your scout, like after training for 25 village, like 25 HP, because of the fact that you're not, you're later to fuel H anyway, you were never supposed to snipe a villager. So that's kind of the only idea for me personally to really trade HP there is when you are behind in feudal. Now, you think that you will be behind in feudal age with Lithuanians against Burgundians? No, but I did lose the vill to us. I, I did lose the vill to a boar. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I did attack the vill. I noticed he didn't have loom. I thought I found it. I thought I seen an opportunity to where I could possibly snipe him or at least get mm -hmm. him weaker so my scout could pick it off later. Um, and you were steadfast in saying not to take that risk. I mean, it paid off for him because he was able to fight me back and then it's got a scout there. And I should have known that if I was paying attention, I would have known that his scout was close by pushing deer instead of being by my base, which is typically what I would assume in this situation uh, at this timing. If I'm scouting him, likely he's out trying to find me. And I thought I could just pick a loomless vill, but I think that was an issue because I just lost HP for no reason. I just don't think that it's ever worth it in mm -hmm. Arabia at least. Unless you're an eagle and you can actually pick off a villager. But in the end of the day, I really don't think it's ever worth it. Even okay. if you did pick off that villager and you lose your scout, I think it's not worth it for you. Okay. It's actually never ever worth it. If you lose the scout for a villager, I think it's actually bad for you. For okay. sure. So yeah. right now, I want you, why I told you that Thanks. this is big 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 <laughs> on his main goal. <laughs> yeah, you and you're scouting for the fact that whether or not he's taking, you know, anything or, you know, right. you have the main goal. That's the only thing that you really need to scout for. Is the main goal. Game, the yeah, and you were saying the scout, and like, uh, I think I think maybe that's where I need to get better, or at least understand. I should have been sitting on his gold and my and scouting his gold, but instead I was just scouting the shadow area that I haven't scouted yet. You know what I mean? I I, I think it's okay for you to be scouting his shadow area, but once you scout the yeah, main dude. goal, just go here a little bit, just look at stuff, come back. Look at this a little bit, come, come back, back, look at this a little bit, come back. Like, it's fine to s s start in a circle, right? Uh -huh. But in reality, is that you always know that the military building is going to be in the front. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just pretty easy to always guess what's happening. So, you know, once you scout the mangoes in yeah, the front, I did scout it. like the military buildings most likely will be like built like this, etc. Mm -hmm. Your scout should always just go back, poke a little bit here just to see whether or not he's being cheeky and build a barracks here instead of here. Mm -hmm. Go back, look at the boat. Poke away to see if he's walling here, let's say. Come back and look at the gold. It's what I want you to accomplish here. Okay. But then the mistake, you, I want you to understand why I said hitting the villager was a mistake. Mm -hmm. I want not not uh, because I, of this, I get not it. because well, of losing HP, but I want you to look at what I was seeing. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna shoot. You lose HP here, and now 
I'm just gonna show you what happens when this is fighting. I'm not yeah. gonna care about your micro here. Yeah, I'm doing the dumb micro stuff in my I, I fucking put Vils in the TC and just set them there for like ten seconds. And look at this lumber camp. And yeah. why did you ever need to fight there? I didn't. You're, I could have just ran home. You were always going to go up faster, right? You yeah. saw that he was taking gold already. You told me you saw that he was taking gold already. Uh -huh. So you know that he was either Drush or Man at Arms, with bo which both, according to standard timing, should be slower than your scout opening. Yeah. So why are you trading HP for your scout yeah. that is more valuable because you what? are going up to cast a few blades earlier, oh. and you're trading HP like that for no reason. Like, yeah. I wouldn't even do if I, like, I don't know, I'm let's say I'm a superior micro player than someone that I'm playing against. I still wouldn't take that trade because there's no reason for me to take that trade. As soon as I'd hit once on the hill, like once or twice on the hill, I just run back. Like why 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 would I ever need to do that? If he keeps on chasing me, I can take potential good trades like here and there, but I will never ever try to force fights anymore. Yeah. Because I... right now you see how you took that fight against that villager, and now your scout is not at the ideal position ever. Ever, yeah. And not only that, like I'm going scouts as I'm literally just weakening one of my uh, potential army, feudal army for no reason yep like you your scout if you didn't attack that villager should have been around here at this point if he chases you you're fine with that that is actually okay because it's 45 against 45 right uh -huh. so you have the micro potential because he's chasing you the person who's chasing usually loses doesn't because of the fact that you're chasing him up high ground potentially right that's what i mean but yeah that's what i mean by you should have never done that second thing would be the fact that now you can't see that he's actually drushing. I thought it was a man arms because his barracks was so late, but guess what? It was actually a drush. Yeah. And therefore, you didn't catch it. And guess what? Um, like, see what happens? This snowballs Welcome, a Loki. lot. Mm -hmm. This oh, snowballs a lot because right now, you can actually pick this villager off. This yeah. is well, actually now... Once I hit feudal, if I'm over there by that wall where he's going to want to wall in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you would have known that this militia was coming. Like, you would have scouted it. Like, if your scout was permanently here, this snowballs the hell out of the game. This yeah. is actually where the snowball actually began already. From the very, very start of where... That's why I don't want you to do that micro thing. I told you to, like, yeah. not do it. Why? Because it was just, it's just not useful. And right now, you see? Now, because of all that microing, all that... You no, forgot horse off color. Berries. Yeah. And you I forgot horse off color. Yeah. You got pushed off berries. Instead of the fact that now, you're just going to be... You run straight into his TC because you didn't mm -hmm. know what was going on, right? So yeah. now your whole eco is a lot more messed up. His trust that already everything that he ever needed to do. He forced you to have horse collar, forced you to lose your scout, and forced basically everything that he everything. needed. Mm -hmm. And now again, you're doing this micro stuff. Like what? What? What was that? I was, like it was not necessary, right? You actually yeah. lost a scout. You lost a scout later. I'll I'll literally okay. team yeah. number team it just because you just because you lost it later. Yeah, right there. That? Yeah. That now? Yep. Yeah, just you could have just easily waited. Yep. Just waited for all three to get there. You waited for okay. all three to get there, pulled two fills off of it, and clear it. That's it. You didn't have to do that, right? You okay. lost You lost basically two scouts for no reason. This one's like 5 HP, basically. Right. So then that's how you lose timing because you're focusing on the w w weird the things. The wrong things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's this is okay now. This is fine. Like, you're getting gold. You're getting a market down pretty soon. But now I want you to wall up as fast as possible. Now you see the stable, which is fine. Again, this is okay. I'm gonna show you this villager count right now. You are only one vill ahead, and but that's okay. Because look at this. Like you're you're two vills ahead while being only twenty percent behind. He also made mistakes too, right? right? He definitely also made mistakes. It is not the end of the world if you lose a villager and everything. You're two vills ahead at this point, actually. But the whole thing about this game that's this is where progression yeah. goes weird. When I talk about um, like mid elo level games, is that this is where progression gets really, really weird. You should actually never ever really put like I mean you get this hill perfect, but the Definitely. whole thing is that your objective has always been, like when it's stable against stable, you both should know that you guys cannot get into each other's bases. Yeah, yeah, it's just barrel. a gentle agreement. Which means I'm one bill behind. He had wheelbarrow oh, no. though. And so I'm I'm one bill behind, which isn't terribly though. I'm one bill and twenty percent um, behind. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, he had Wilbur, which I mean that that definitely makes a difference. But yeah. I mean, of, like of course we're gonna. Use, I mean, you definitely got interrupted a lot. You added yeah. a lot, so it happens, right? But mm -hmm. it's playable. Yeah. It's but the whole bad. thing is that I want you to understand that from a game uh -huh. sense perspective. No, I, I definitely get. I, I definitely understand. Like. I, I, I can see the ramifications watching it back on the wreck with you right now. Just doing that, just sacrificing scout HP just to be cute on a micro it would literally serve zero purpose. And it was actually, um, uh, what's the word, to not my benefit. It did yep, not benefit you, me at all. 
No one does that in tournaments. It made it you worse. See, you literally yeah. see that no one ever does it in tournaments. It's yeah. because it's just not good. It, like, yeah. we, like, we do that on stream just to be, like, fancy, fancy. Yeah. Like, on tor- in tournaments, literally no one do. Yeah. Literally I, no one will ever do it, right? I, I think maybe that's just, like, a low elo thing carried over. Um, because you, you get rewarded every once in a while in low elo. Like, right there, I could have mm-hmm. I could have got a, a vill, like, say, back when I was 1100, 1200, and then won that game and thought, man, that was great. I picked off a villa early and that gave me a lead and then I you know, but I think that's just a dumb thing. And I, I, I mean I definitely recognize now just I pr- practically wasted a scout, then I wasted another one, and then my third one is on five HP. And I that's something that's four scouts I could have had. I probably could have saved them all if I microed them when I should have microed them when I was fighting the militia and pulled the weak one away. If I was able to save four scouts right now, then I could actually pressure his wall and force him to repair and do shit like that. But, or yeah. actually have, you know, or the two scouts, like, for example, Scouting for the relics. four scouts right now, two scouts is here, one scout here, yeah, one scout exactly. here. What's the detriment? That's the word picking. So mm-hmm. blue. Like, how, how big would that be, right? You, and you know that too. You know that yourself, that, like, that's mm-hmm. that's the difference. That's the small snowball, so that makes the difference. Yeah. And yet, again, I just want to go back to the point of when it's knights against knights, it's almost certainly always gentleman's agreement, or it's just usually how the game goes. You're never ever gonna break in. Just impossible. Just like admit it. You you will not break in. No one will ever break in at the yeah. high level. Or like you should know that yourself too. If you ever break in, it's because the other opponent made a mistake. Yeah. So once you once you have that in mind, then you will understand what I mean. That siege workshop does not make any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless, the siege workshop only. I have, makes have nothing sense stopping the wall behind. Right. Mm-hmm. I have nothing stopping the wall behind. All you're no, doing is hitting a wall or a house. No. And- no, it's the fact that if you put a siege, you waste 200 wood on that, mm-hmm. and then 135 wood, uh, I mean 135 gold on the Mangano, and 160 mm-hmm. wood on the Mangano, again, that's 360 wood, that's 6 farms, and 135 wood. I yeah. mean 135 gold. Cool. That's, that's a monk in a TC, yeah. And you are trying to, and at the end of the day, that Mangano does not contribute to any fighting against knights against knights, it does not contribute to anything. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like it the night, uh, yeah. Mangano, like the... literally don't do anything in a night against night fight. No, like, it doesn't. It literally does not. Yep. Yeah. So then, um, that's why I told you not to. You should have had the gentleman's agreement. Okay. Basically, when it's night against night, you are playing until you're playing for relics. You're fighting for relics. And the second thing would be the fact that you really don't do damage to the other person until the other person has to move out of his walls, which is just a gentleman's agreement in that situation. I definitely, I, I definitely understand that now and i don't think i did prior to this like because because of a fact that you're just going to be like for example right now this this game right now you took some villagers off of wood i didn't stop you from it because it was your thought and also like everything but then like overall i probably would have had like 11 villagers on wood and like just like seven villas on gold because i know that i wouldn't need my second um uh defense upgrades and stuff like that, I wouldn't invest it into damage food, basically. Right. It's how I would have played this matchup, because I know that it's a gentleman's agreement, and if anyone who breaks it should lose the game. Okay. If that makes sense. Like, it's a gentleman's agreement because of the fact that that's just how the game should progress, usually. And it's obviously there are people that will do a 1TC all-in and stuff like that, and obviously those things are going to be hard to stop. But in reality is that most players will go for the two stable, one monastery, with almost zero to no upgrades on their knights, and then just play around with husbandry, trying to snipe monks here and there, or you know back off from fights whenever they fight it bad, like bad monk to convert knights, etc. You're just fighting like small margin of gains. That's yeah. how the gentleman agreement works. But instead, we're gonna see the full commitment, and we're gonna see what happens to the vill count. We're just gonna focus on the vill count okay, uh, for a little bit. Your monster, I would have preferred it out, forward. out outwards too. Yep. Yeah, forward. Mm-hmm. And now you see how like little information you're getting from the fact that you lost those scouts. This is fine. This is all okay for now. Like all, everything so, so far, you just the idling villagers and stuff like that. That's the part that like kind of messes more. But the whole thing is that you actually have the hill control. You are trying to look for relics right now. This is all completely okay. Why not just you know play on from here? At this very moment, you have three hundred wood or something like that. Just build a TC right now. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have, like, 300 wood or something like that, like, right there. But, yeah, I, all my farms right now, because I didn't have horse collar, though. 
which yeah. is, is mm -hmm. another snowball effect. Because and why do you not have enough? Like why do you not yeah. have enough? Because like, wood was because, because I let the drush come. Yeah. And also because of this, look at where I'm clicking yeah. right now. The plus oh, two yeah. and plus one. What's that investment for? Are you ever gonna fight like uh, archers, or are you going to fight as soon as you see a fight? You whack off. As soon as you see a fight, you back off. That's literally what the gentleman is, right? And just heal uh -huh. up. Yep. And like, or if you back up enough, you're going to have a monk, which they'll never dive in. So all these upgrades don't serve you anything. You're always going to be knights, monks against knight monks, which means that upgrades don't matter. Mm -hmm. So that's why your second TC was delayed because you get you didn't get bow saw because of the fact they tried to get all the upgrades. And you see what I mean by the walls? Like you can't yeah, break it. Yeah, I can't break it. He's second. Uh huh. And you see how he only has, I mean, I don't know why he got plus two, too. But then he only has less upgrades, and yet, well, because of the fact that he has Cavaliers, too. But the thing yeah. is that he just fought you off so easily, like, without anything, and yet he already has the second town center up. Right. So now his eco's mm -hmm. inherently better. And now, when I say that his eco's better, you decide to, which is true, right? Like, his eco is probably, like, what, 10 villagers ahead now with wheelbarrow, probably? Yeah. Like, 10 vills? Yeah. Totally. You decide that you were going to all end this. But instead, this is, again, still a playable position. Yeah. If you added a second town center, I don't know, a third town center, like, here or something like that. Instead of the Siege Workshop, matter. yeah. And then you just play for Gentleman's Agreement, as I said before, trying mm -hmm. to find the relics, you know? Like, yeah. Like, you still had those two scouts somewhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You... Mm -hmm. I have but one behind my you... base and one in the bar. I could have still at least gotten two. two... Mm -hmm. There's one here and one And there, one back right? there, yeah. One here, yep. One here and one here, right? But instead, this was in Falk of War. And therefore, you didn't play to the Gentleman's Agreement. And even though, when I said that Mangan up, that, you know how I said that the Siege Workshop was good? Yeah. We're still gonna see why it's bad. Because you forced the fight that somehow you won. I don't think that you should have won it. Like, I, I really yeah, don't think it, that you should have fought. It, yeah, it was the damn upgrades that I, I, I shouldn't have got anyway. It's it's because he never should have fought you. Yeah, That's why he I fought uphill to too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, like, you know, he could have given up this stable. And never fight you. What I meant when I say knight against knight, he should never. You should never get he in. He shouldn't fight me. Yeah. He shouldn't fight you. Just stay back. He had three stables. He should know that his eco is better because of Burgundians. He has Cavaliers. He already picked up a few relics. He has yeah. what three TC going on? Why does he ever have to fight you? Just give up the stable. If yeah. your Mangano ever and he knows that your his eco is better just from this Mangano because of the fact that you can definitely cannot afford a third town center. Or just enough arms once you spend 360 wood on yeah. a Mangano. The Mangano and the Seed Workshop is such an investment, yeah. So that's why he's. So that's fight. what I need to understand. Like, because, like, it just feels like, like, like right here, it was my moment, I think. But, like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think I recognize that typically of, like, how much it takes and costs to do a forward Siege and a Mango. Like, right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's so much when you think about it. Um, I am literally am all in and I'm forced to do damage and all I do is I take a stable He just stonewalls behind. I'll never really get in if I get in right here Maybe because I just cleared his army, which is obviously a, a mistake on his part Like I'm forced to do damage right now. And if I don't do damage, it's game over That's his fault for letting yeah, you in right? You should never fault. play to his fault like that's, that's yep. just not how you that's just not how you play the game in general You know like you should play yeah. And at the end of the day, you're giving him a lot of space here. Like, I think, I actually think there was a chance, potentially. You have a 20-something army, like 21 knights, with some monks and stuff like that, and a mangano. There was a chance, potentially, I think, if you move that mangano here, stop the gold income. The gold, yeah. Yeah, like, force all the villagers to not be there first, break the palisade, and then dive in. Yeah. I think there was actually a chance. But the whole thing is that this requires such a specific all-in skill. That mm -hmm. doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, so especially I'm gonna put also, out its game now yeah. because the game was just over from here. But you know what you what I was saying regarding yeah. the stakes now, right? Yeah, and I understand what you were saying now, and I, mm -hmm. I did definitely understand like the the snowball from the the scouts, and then the snowball from over investing with the siege.